Hello everyone. I'd like to show you five things I learned while I was doing focus bracketing with my Sony A7C Mark II. In my last video, I did focus bracketing on my new Sony A7C Mark II and I made some mistakes which could have been avoided. Since then, I was thinking about them and I came up with a couple of things I would like to share with you. There are two bracket settings I used top one. Here the focusing is progressing forward until the preset number of images are taken or the focus reaches infinity. There is the bottom settings but here you can set only three images. It's obviously useless for macro photography where the depth of field is very thin. You can use it for bracketing landscape images but I wouldn't recommend it because of two things. First, there is no in-camera focus stacking. So no matter how you take your images for the bracket, you always have to stack them manually in post-processing in a different software. Second, you never know where exactly the focus is going to be placed at the second and the third images. You have to rely on the decision of the camera. So instead of this setting, I would recommend to take three images with selecting the focus manually, either with the buttons or with using the touch focus functionality. One of the best features of the mirrorless cameras is that you can use the magnified view of the live image. Furthermore to this, at Sony cameras, you can use the autofocus in magnified view mode. Let me show you how you can do it. This option is only available when you assign the magnifying function to a button. After you set up your composition, you have to push this button, then the magnified view appears. You can see a little white cross. That is your focus point. When you push the focusing button, then this white cross becomes green when the focus is achieved. This function can come really handy when checking the focus is critical, especially at macro photography. Autumn is fast approaching and you can see that the fern started to dive back and showing some nice brownish color now. When focus bracketing, only the focus of the first image is set by you. The rest is handled by the algorithm. But not every focus mode is available. When you have focus bracketing selected and you go into the focusing modes, then you can see the continuous autofocus mode is not enabled. But the bigger surprise was for me that the manual focus mode is enabled. And this is really important when bracketing for macro images. If you find this video useful, then please don't forget to give me a like down below. As I mentioned earlier, you can do focus bracketing in manual focus mode. Let me show you how my workflow looks like. So I usually select when I want to focus in single focus mode by using the magnifier and selecting the focus point. I push the focus button, then wait until the 
white cross becomes green and the focus is confirmed. I get out of the magnified view, I swap to manual focus mode and then I turn the focus this method ensures that the subject is always going to be focused from its closest point to the furthest point. The ultimate goal of focus bracketing is to achieve sharper images by using this special method to increase the depth of field. It's quite obvious then that we should use our lenses at their sharpest aperture. Usually lenses perform at their best when stopped down two or three stops. That means if you have a macro lens which has an f 2.8 maximum aperture and needs to be stopped down to f5.6 or f8. I would definitely recommend to use these aperture settings when focus bracketing macro images. There are also some extreme situations when you want to keep the creamy background then you can open up your aperture a little bit more and also when you're doing extreme close-ups you might need to stop down to f11. If you have any other good tips, advice, recommendation regarding focus bracketing on Sony cameras, then please don't hesitate to leave a comment down below. See you soon and may the light be with you all.